So I'm surprised I haven't seen too much Sapphire Steel. Let me know in the comment section below if you're playing, if you've run into it at all. But I went ahead and made some, I guess, pretty obvious upgrades to the deck. But in fiddling around with it a little bit, I found that the deck basically has like shifted its core mechanic of what it really aims to do. In this version, I've added four Smash, I play four Grab Your Swords, and zero Whole New World. And you might automatically think that sounds terrible. Um, but just hear me out and just take a look at these matches. In this particular one against Amethyst Steel, um, we're kind of at the midpoint of the game. I was able to get a Fishbone Quill off the Scuttle. I've since drawn into another one, but the Hiram, um, after getting the ramp, is able to banish it and get the card draw off. Hiram in Sapphire continues to be one of the best card draw engines in the game still, despite uh, you know two sets coming out since Hiram. Uh, Amethyst Steel is still a very strong deck though. I want to explore this one next, but after the opponent kind of developed a pretty decent sized board uh, and got ahead in the lore count, you can see now we have stabilized and we're setting up for this Cogsworth play, which, you know, the principle of Cogsworth against Steel still remains. Uh, it is extremely strong into the Steel matchups here. It's kind of dead against Ruby, and we'll take a look at a Ruby Amethyst match a little bit later. But you have so much versatility with this deck still. Um, the addition of Scuttle in your two drop slot solves the curve problem that this deck had. I don't run any Develop Your Brains, no Gramatalas, and like I mentioned, no Whole New Worlds. Instead, the three Sportospheres that I've added and the four Popsicles are enough for me to hopefully dig through my deck, in, in, including with the Mulligan, in order to dig for a Beast Trash Kiro or a Hero in my starting hand that I can hopefully keep for my card draw engine on turn four or five. And with that, you know, you kind of just play the you know sapphire ruby game of hero or bust but you have more more card draw than they do because you have four to sphere and they don't and you have beast tragic kiro and they don't and so there's been times you know i remember my first constructed tournament in person i drew all four of my whole new world within my first four turns i kept one in my hand mulligan drew into another one and on turn four when i dropped the hero my drew my, my draw two for hero was two more whole new worlds um, and I was just like, I hate this card. <laughs> Even though it, it's, in my opinion, one of the most powerful cards in the game, y you guys, if you've ever played it, know how clunky it can be. Plus, if your opponent is a good player, they likely know how to play around the whole new world, dumping their hand as well, so that they know that they're gonna draw a fresh new seven once they've exhausted all of their resources. And here, my opponent probably was trying to play around the whole new world, dumping their hand, expecting that I would play it, um, because you know that's what Sapphire Steel wants to do. But here you can see, like with the Tamatoa Recycle, which I now play four Tamatoas, by the way, because with four Popsicle, three or four Fortisphere, four um, Popsicle and two Lucky Dime, or not Popsicle, four, um, fishbone quill and two lucky dime the tamatoa is a huge closer for you just like it is in um, ruby sapphire now this deck still likely has a problem with ruby sapphire but you being able to dig a little bit more consistently for card draw and use scuttle um, i mean they probably use scuttle too now right uh, it, it does allow you to get your game plan going a little bit quicker and here you're going to see something kind of amazing but with the bells you're able to hopefully close out the game uh pretty strongly now the reason I've opted to include four Grab Your Swords and four Smash is because of Emerald and the prevalence of both the Diablo and the Ursula Deceiver of all still. Whether it be Emerald Amethyst, Emerald Steel, or any other Emerald variant that comes up, these are all still very aggro-focused decks. And being able to smash away a Diablo, an Ursula Deceiver of all, especially when you're on the draw, can be a huge momentum swing for you um, when they've developed resources in order to play those characters out with a game plan. Um, you know, you just kind of throw off the whole game plan. There was, um, you know, if, if if somebody like opts to try to shift the Diablo, they discard a card and, you know, they're down on advantage. Yes, they'll draw one for your turn, but then if you smash it, you know, they don't get any any other, you know, advantage off of it. They lose the character they played on turn one, the, the, the one drop Diablo. They discard a card for the shift, so they lose another card and then they lose the actual Diablo. So that's three cards invested and in all that tempo for just one card draw off of your draw and if you if you smash away the Diablo, right? Or you grab your swords it away or something. So it's still a hugely relevant thing. And here you see me develop triple bell. Um, the opponent just ends up scooping. I didn't know they still had the chat function in the game. I thought they removed it. Um, but, you know, that's how important 
dealing with the aggro threats are. And what's nice is it bleeds over into any other aggro decks that you might face. Smashes in this particular matchup, if somebody still opts to play the mini surfer, we'll deal with that. It'll deal with other evasives. Another huge thing that Smash does is it takes out the new Pegasus. So when they shift the Pegasus, they have a you know a two questing body on board that has evasive. It is a 3-3, so Smash will deal with that. Um, it's just a pretty versatile card, at least in the start of the meta, I found. So that's why I've opted to include it. I did lose a match to Emerald Steel, um, and that's what made me opt to include the four Grab Your Swords and the four Smash. Um, you know, you can always ink the Grab Your Swords if they're if it's not useful. And with the Fortisphere, like I mentioned, I find that if you if you see a Hiram or two, like you you'll always have an item to banish now. Whereas you know this deck before playing the Develop Your Brains, it was kind of a tempo loss. You know, only a one cost, but still. It does matter. Now you can just draw the card with a Fortisphere or with the Popsicle. It's it's re really, really strong in my opinion. So here you're seeing us on the draw against Ruby Amethyst. They go Olaf into Rafiki. Uh, they're still on the Maleficence, which is interesting. Um, I think that card will never be bad, but I just think it's very competitive now, that, that three drop slot. They drop a Minnie Mouse, and you know, normally, you know, if you're not on Smash or other forms of removal, you basically have to Zeus this card. Um, or Tinkerbell with Grab Your Swords, you know, and you know, the previous list of Sapphire still didn't really play all those things. It's just very nice to have the option that if the opponent develops a big threat, you know, the Tinkerbell most helpful, the Minnie Mouse Surfer, the Pegasus, the Ursula Deceiver of All, the Diablo, anything, you know, Mim cards, anything like that, um, you know, the small Robin Hood to prevent the shift or just any other shift targets, you can just smash it away, right? It can't get ripped out of your hand with the Ursula Deceiver, which is the main reason why I opted to play this one over the um, Strength of a Raging uh, Fire. Um, or, uh, you know, the, the, the three damage instead of the two damage you get from a Let the Storm Rage on, even though that is a card draw, I think is also better. Plus, in certain matchups, you know, you just ink the Smash, right? Whereas you can't really ink the uh, Let the Storm Rage on unless you have a Fishbone Quill. There, I'd rather just use the Fishbone Quill on like a Grab Your Swords. I don't need too many uninkable removal spells. Um, but the Robin Hood is, I think, a staple now in this deck because your turn three is either Fishbone Quill, Shift Robin Hood, or the Smash in order to, you know, regain tempo or slow down the opponent's plays. So here you can see, you know, my opponent is likely trying to play around the uh, uh, whole new world that they think would be coming. Um, and so again, this is the whole psychological play. I know that I'm fine because I have a Hiram in the back pocket that's going to just draw me into a ton of advantage. Um, here, I... Probably should play the Hiram. Yeah, don't play the Scuttle. There's no real point at this moment. I don't necessarily need another Fishbone Quill. Uh, we draw into with a Fortisphere. So again, just like super strong. Haven't used the Bodyguard ability on it yet. But like in that last match, I could have used it on maybe like Tamatoa and Protect My Bells, for example. Uh, but, you know, I don't think it'll come up too much. But the Robin Hood in this deck, you know, able to keep pace with the lore gain. And despite my opponent going full on aggro at the start, we're tied up in lore. I have way more card advantage than they do. Um, you know, yes, my board is susceptible to a Sisu right now, taking out the Hiram, which is the only thing that that Sisu would deal with on Sapphire Steel side. It's, it is strong, but the, like, even if they took it out, I got another Hiram, I've got a Beast Tragic Hero. Yes, if they have the Medusa follow-up, the Beast Tragic Hero and the Robin Hoods lose to it, so does the Bell. But the, the, just like the overwhelming advantage you get off of this Hiram draw engine, especially if they just, if your Hiram survives for one turn and it draws four cards, like... Look at the advantage, like just look at it right here on the screen. <laughs> it's two cards for my opponent, six ink um, versus my, I'm not even gonna count that, six in hand, three or five in hand now, three on board. Uh, I'm gonna get ahead in the ink. I still have the Hiram on the field, plus one in my hand with an item ready to go, a shift Robin Hood ready to, to drop down. I know the opponent has this goat and one other mystery card in hand and they're gonna draw for turn. So I could drop the bell and it's like, pick your poison. Do you want me to draw cards off beast or hear them or quest for five with the bell potentially if you don't, uh, if, assuming you have the Medusa, right? So despite all these targets being Medusaable, you know, going wide in this scenario is, is very interesting. Yes, you have to worry about a be prepared as well, but I have the follow-up. I got another hero. I've got a bell. So you, you, you know, it's just like a wealth of options. The whole new world is very strong. Don't get me wrong. But again, I just think with the way that it is right now, or maybe, you know, early on in the meta, this version seems to be working very nicely for me. Um, the opponent opts to drop a Tremaine and we know their last card in hand is Goat. And, you know, we're on 14 lore. The opponent's on 12. You know, they quest for two, they drop Goat. They go to 15 at most. I just drop a Hiram here, <laughs> draw into a Tamatoa and a Fortisphere. 
uh, or let it go like just you know the, the, like what am i doing why am i doing this just like i'm spoiled here right like i'm, I'm playing into a top deck be prepared but knowing that they're in top deck mode um there's not much they can do and i think they just end up scooping it up here but yeah sapphire steel looking pretty nice all right we're now into bonus match territory so if you've made it this far in the video let me know by posting a comment in the comment section below but this was the only Sapphire Steel player I think I've ever run into, and it just so happened when I to run into them when I was playing Sapphire Steel myself. Um, so it's, it's it'll be interesting to see what this opponent is on for their build, uh, and you'll, you'll see that it's quite different from mine. Yeah, they start off with the Inked Anna, so they're on like a hero esque build, which I'm assuming is playing Phil and whatnot. And this is a really cool version of the deck that I also want to explore. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. There are so many decks that you could potentially build that might be meta competitive um but we don't know until we try them right we got to build them try them so just let me know in the comment section below right uh, drop a like let me you know if these videos keep doing well i'll be more incentivized to find the time to to make uh make these videos for you guys um but here you're seeing me play out on curve uh, the opponent opted to drop popsicle and robin hood i drop robin hood and scuttle and i grab a popsicle off of that so i'm feeling pretty good yeah they're clearly on a, a very hero focused build uh with um with the fill um, but they're going to shift Robin Hood here with four cards in their hand. They're going to a whole new world and I lose all that advantage that I was hopefully going to play myself into with that hand. Um, but it's fine uh, because we did draw into a fishbone. The established Robin Hood is a little bit of a problem now for me because I did lose, I believe, two of my own Robin Hoods. Um, but off this fishbone, we're going to ink a scuttle. I probably should ink the Lucky Dime. Um, yeah, that would have been better. Uh, but we do have a hero, which is decent. Uh, yeah, the opponent is on all kinds of like hero stuff here, right? Um, the popsicle into the draw is also really strong for them here. And yeah, you know, against those non-emerald decks that, you know, would get gain advantage off of Diablo if you Whole New Worlded, um, Whole New World is still a very disruptive card, right? Uh, nonetheless, though, we do eventually draw into the Cogsworth here and, you know, putting it back at the start turned out to be a good decision because this is the card that's going to probably win you the game in this matchup. Um, because opposing Sapphire Steel decks have almost no interaction with Cogsworth. It's like Tinkerbell and Grab Your Swords is really all they can do, assuming you don't quest with it or, or exert it. Um, but this opponent here, yep, they're going to establish Triple Popsicle. So, you know, as soon as that Hiram hits the board, they're going to be in a really good position because we don't play Benjas anymore. They shift the Beast onto the new Beast here, um, which is really interesting. And, you know, they got a card draw and they've got a Robin Hood that I'm thinking that they're not afraid of questing with. So what are our options here? Um, I, it's it's kind of rough, but we do have this... Okay, not, not anymore. We did have an Along Came Zeus, which I played two of. The opponent is going to sing another whole new world, and we see that they had another one in hand. So again, a very clunky hand for the opponent, and that Grab Your Swords that was left in their hand also doesn't do much now because of the Cogsworth we have on board. And uh, Cogsworth, I don't believe, is a hero, so the opposing player is probably not playing it. And like I said, the Cogsworth is something that's going to just win me the game here. We do draw into another Zeus. Like I said, I only play two, so very nice to see it there because I can um, potentially deal some significant damage to the opponent here. Um, I don't remember what I do, but I clear their board. I'm thinking it through, and I'm like, okay, um, I should be able to have an advantage. I ink the Smee, I remember that, and I shift the Robin Hood. Do I throw it into the beast no i should what do i do here i don't even remember i make i, I think i make the right play but let me know if, if you're if you're watching this section another exercise for you guys oh i'm on the timer now so i'm gonna make a misplay of course okay we double throw into the beast to take it out we throw scuttle into the robin hood and then just hard cast zeus okay that maintains my board i do have three damage on the cogsworth now unfortunately but it wipes out the opponent's board we've got the hiram double hiram and a forest sphere in hand so the opponent's already gone through three whole new worlds. I think this is kind of what I was maybe calculating in the match. And like, you know, I can stabilize my hand now, draw a ton of cards. The odds the opponent has the last whole new world pretty low. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, they established the fill here. And at this point, it's too slow. Um, even though I was on the draw, I, I, have, I have the tempo now because I wiped the opponent's board. Like them playing those whole new worlds um, benefited me, I think. So yeah, here you see me drop the Tamatoa. Um, I, I ink one of the Hiram's, uh, and I'm going to quest with the Robin Hood and the Scuttle. Ooh, and the Cogsworth. 
Uh, not remembering that Fortisphere takes one to use the ability to give Bodyguard to my Robin Hood is what I was trying to do there, I think. Uh, so they could crash the fill into the Cogsworth, which would... I, I guess that wouldn't be the worst for me. The opponent's only on four cards now. Uh, okay, they, they grab your sword, so it didn't matter in the end anyways. They took out the Cogsworth regardless. Uh, but I, I imagine they want to keep this fill up because of the advantage it generates. It not only gets the their hero characters... Sorry, no, it gives them lore whenever they play a hero character. One lore. And then it gives the hero characters Challenger 1. So it's a pretty strong card for the hero hero um, archetype in this game, um, which is really nice to see. They draw into a Hiram, which draws them into a Let the Storm Rage on, which puts another couple of points of damage on my Robin Hood, but you know we're not too worried about that. We bring back the Lucky Dime Inc., the one-drop Robin Hood. Um, and, okay, we establish the Lucky Dime, use it on the Tamatoa. And then just take out the fill. I don't really care about the Robin Hood anymore. It served its purpose. Draw, drew me in, draws me another card into another Lucky Diamond. We have Bell in hand. So this game is over already. Even if the opponent has a way to out the Tamatoa. Which I doubt they do. Because they're on Sapphire Steel. And um, yeah. That's GG's. And the last bonus match I'll include. Is going up against Amber Steel. I normally would not include this. Because on the play. With Sapphire Steel. Like... It's, I don't want to say an auto win against Amber Steel, but it's a very good matchup for you. Uh, again, just because the Cogsworth is so powerful. Like, yes, the Cinderella, I guess, could technically deal with it if they sing a song and challenge the ready Cogsworth, but I mean, it's, uh, it's still a really bad matchup for them. Uh, interestingly enough, I don't think this opponent is on the standard Amber Steel song list. They're on some aggro variant, which is very interesting. The Pluto here is very weak though because if they do exert it i can obviously take it out with my robin hood which represents good value but it does depend on what they they decide to play off this pluto because do i want to lose my robin hood uh the aerial here is actually very strong because it would trade positively into the robin hood if i opt to take it out which means i lose my shift um and this bare necessities represents a problem and i was the i was like do i really want to get rid of my whole hand of non-characters because they're just going to ink the bare necessities here. But I think this is the play I had to make now. So the Smee will take out the um, the Pluto. Knowing full well that the Ariel won't challenge the Smee. Because that's just a really bad trade for them. They're going to drop another Pluto after inking their bare necessities as expected. And they have the Baboom anyways. Uh, but they're down to four cards. Um, and they still have this Ariel Singer which is a little bit of a problem. Losing that Robin Hood does hurt a little bit. Uh, I think I have to... Yeah, play the Hiram here. So I used, uh, unfortunately, I get rid of the Scuttle off of the Fishbone Quill, but I am able to draw two. And, um, ooh, gonna ink that Hiram, which isn't great. Quest with the Smee and pass turn, because again, the opponent is likely not gonna quest with, or challenge it with the Aerial. Um, and nothing they can play will really out the Smee in terms of challenging if they wanna waste a song on it. With the one damage on the Smee already, it would have been taken out with that song regardless. They drop a Mickey Trumpeter, and I'm just like, whoa, okay. Um, wish I had a smash or something right now, but, uh, or grab your, well, yeah, or even a, grab, grab your swords, I could hard cast, uh, but I don't, so I just drop the Beast Tragic Hero and see what the opponent wants to do. Ah, they're also on the fill build. Uh, let's see what's going to drop off this Mickey, a Beast uh, Protector, um, which if I have a grab your swords, it would take, okay, and then the, oh man, oh, thank you. I just have to say thank you. We draw to the grab your swords, we play four, so... Yeah, that's really good. Uh, they do still have three ink and this Pluto that they could exert. So they could play something that costs four. But a grab your swords here would deal eight damage directly to the beast. Which would open up their field to be taken out by other things. They smash the Smee. Because I guess they just don't care about the extra draw off of the beast. Which leads me to believe they have another whole new world in hand. Um, so the extra draw here doesn't really matter too much for them. Uh, they'd rather get rid of the character, the extra challenge. The grab your swords puts all eight damage onto the beast. Getting it off the field. And now I have to think about how do I want to clean up this board. So I challenge the Mickey with the Hiram and leave them on the Pluto and the Ariel. And now we have seven ink to work with now that we've cleared up the board. Uh, and unfortunately for the opponent, we're going to establish the Fortispheres and the Popsicles. And if they can't deal with this Hiram, I know I've inked one already, but this Hiram is going to generate a ton of advantage. So we drop the... Um, the fishbone quill and I think I made a misplay thinking I didn't ink yet or something and so I tried to ink the Robin Hood and it makes me play it and I'm like whoops I think what I wanted to do was yeah ink and then fishbone quill and maybe Zeus the aerial maybe um, but it's fine I mean if this Robin Hood survives 
I have a shift target, but I'm expecting it to get grab your swords or something. Um, so the opponent inks the beast and just things a whole new world again. So I should have used the fish bone quill, but it's fine again, like I mentioned. They do have seven ink to work with potentially with the uh, Pluto. They drop a fill, which at this point is a little too underwhelming for them. Like they need to start dealing with my board uh, because as soon as I drop that Tamatoa or drawing into a Cogsworth, which I'm able to here, like that's just gonna wrap up the game. We draw two off beast again and uh, the opponent just can't gain enough lore fast enough even with the spill on board to keep up with my explosive uh, end, end game with the Tamatoas and or Bells with the Cogsworths and the Lucky Dimes that either if I've already discarded them I'm going to get them back with a Tamatoa like it doesn't it doesn't matter like at this point the game is unfortunately over um, yeah we dropped the Cogsworth here and I could probably safely drop a Bell as well um, just knowing full well that the resist one that I get off of the Cogsworth is very strong uh, the only thing is like I still die to a Zeus with the bell, but if I get Zeus, like I guess that's fine. I do have another bell. I just drop a Tamatoa instead or something like it's it's pretty strong. So, um, oh, really? I go for the double beast? Okay, that's interesting. Again, just like a wealth of options on what you want to do. Use my beast to challenge the opponent's aerial. Yeah, going for beast here doesn't really make much sense because the odds they have a grab your sword is pretty high. I think I would have been better off dropping the bell right because bell would only take one damage off the grab your swords uh yeah they're on just a bunch of heroes here just whatever they can get um and in a song build you know mini mouse makes sense simba makes sense you can see just kind of what they want to accomplish with this deck but it's too little too late at this point um draw one off beast so they don't even opt to sing a song with the aerial i'm assuming they have one they got to right um they, i mean if they play aerial you got to be playing at least 16 plus songs they just end up scooping just you know knowing that i just probably have way too much top end for them but yeah, the deck list is uh, linked in the description and probably pinned in the comments. We're over 20 minutes now, so if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. Um, but like I said, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see next if you made it this far. Thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.